Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia. Uh, this is the summary for the day 24 of the Ukrainian-Russian conflict. Or some say cannot use the word conflict, must use the word war. So Ukraine war. And in Russia, you cannot use the word war. So it's uh, Russia, not a war. So anyway, um, so this is the summary. Uh, let's start off with this one. Uh, you remember the naval mines I mentioned about floating away and then some of them already float to uh, the coast of Romania or in the waters of Romania? Um, yeah, apparently the in the, the Russian sources said that uh, the Ukrainian Navy planted 420 mines. So uh, that's tremendous. <laughs> so, goodness. so it is all along here. It's all along here. So there are now some of so because of the tide and the current, some has floated away to open water, some hit the coast and explode. So it's out of control. Nobody knows what's happening, and perhaps that's the reason why we are seeing the Russian navy just going in and out, in and out, <clears throat> but never really land because they are afraid of the mine. Uh, perhaps this is the reason why we are not seeing, uh any you no know, amphibious landing on the russian op in this russian operation uh of course i also float the possibility that the the landing ship actually have no soldiers inside uh imagine you are so there are soldiers inside those soldiers must be must be them pissed off <laughs> anyway uh okay so another news is the which is rather significant not for this war actually but significant geopolitically is actually the the first operational use of Kinzhal. Kinzhal is a hypersonic uh hypersonic uh air to ground missile and uh it is nuclear capable so which means it can they can put on a nuclear warhead and uh it can fly up to a speed of uh, Mark 10 which, which is basically 10 times the speed of sound that's absolutely way faster than a speeding bullet and uh, it is claimed to be able to be fired uh, uh, 2000 more than 2000 kilometers away uh, according to I think the Ukrainians the the aircraft the missile is fired from here around here so, and it flew across like this and hit the target uh, there is alleged video of the hypersonic missile flying over uh personally i'm not too sure but the entire missile is glowing it's it's like it, it's as if like it's a it's a fireball fired by the dragon ball characters and then um it's extremely fast uh if you ever witness how a plane fly uh from the one horizon to the other, other horizon uh this this definitely is super fast and then the shock wave came um uh, rather later and then there's another video alleged video of the heat on the on the target uh there are russian there's a russian source that claims that that might not actually be the actual footage but what is significant is if it is the footage of the target getting hit how did the russians actually have a drone flying around here uh around the target and witness the strike that to me is my question because that that drone is basically waiting for the target to be hit and then uh and i don't think the ukrainians are expecting that hit that and then uh so there must be a russian drone right so but for a russian drone to be loitering around here uh waiting for the target to be hit uh that's rather hard to believe uh so that might not actually be the real footage of the heat in fact we might not <clears throat> um, we might not even see the actual footage yet the actual damage yet so uh do not uh just believe that footage you know that there's, there's what there's this like warehouse thingy looking thing and then the round just come straight down and then just explode uh without a lot of explosion then we actually see some people running out uh my gut feeling is that is not the real footage uh <clears throat> so i mean i mean 
that's based on my analysis that it's quite impossible for a Russian drone to be flying around here because as much as uh, the surface to air missile complexes are mostly taken out but they are mostly taken out from in the eastern and the central and northern zone uh, they are probably still a lot uh, in the western side of Ukraine so that's that's that um, so uh, just before I continue and start on the actual fighting here uh, I, w I just want to add a disclaimer uh, do not believe my information 100% okay so whatever info so I know that uh, you I gotten a lot of uh, new subscribers new viewers and new support and I'm really very thankful for you guys and uh, then probably you have not heard I, me saying all this because I used to say it in my earlier my earlier videos when I was covering in the first first week and or so do not believe all my information 100% as actual facts uh, this is this is true for any information that you actually uh, read on the Ukraine war or any war for that matter because all this I'm not there in person to see them so all these are just information from the various sources that I try to distill as much as I can to just the facts and uh, and minus most of the propaganda of course there are some things that are propaganda you can't be can't be helped like for example the humanitarian situation at Mariupol uh, it can't be helped all these kind of things but I need to tell you the information because uh, it's useful to have some some form of context what might actually be happening and uh, I try to based on what I observe over you know because it's a continuous observation right I go from day one all the way to now so I can see the trends and how things uh, unfold and uh, and what are the recurring things that is always constantly happening and then I can have a better sensing what is actually happening so so I can kind of like uh, see through the propaganda a little bit and I can tell you that this propaganda is actually also factual uh, some pro some propagandas are not factual but some propaganda is actually factual so yeah so this is just something to note so so don't trust me for for my words uh, is, this is just for reference so that we can have a set a, a general sensing uh, of what's happening now then uh, so I share I also like to share a bit about how on my of my methods in case you all are not familiar uh, because me, I don't really share a lot about it I take official sources official information from the Russian Ministry of Defense as well as uh, operational information from the Ukraine uh, general staff which is actually their ministry of defense as well so so uh, usually the russians are more uh, informative they will tell you they have captured which exact locations and then they will say sometimes they will add you know their their forces have reached a border of which town or they are moving towards which direction ukrainian information for most part for most of their operational information is just rubbish they will say Oh, they are fighting they are fighting in the area of Potova. They are fighting in the area of Donetsk. The forces are repelled in the in the region of uh, Severo Donetsk. Uh, you, you know then the problem is while this might seem like a lot of information because sometimes the, inf the the operational information can be quite long uh, but they are all rubbish because uh, for example uh, they will say the uh, the Russian forces launched a new offensive in Kharkiv and but the the enemy or the occupiers are repelled. How do I mark this on the map? I can't mark this on the map because there's no information. Kharkiv is so huge, right? So which direction are they coming from? Which city are they fighting in? Uh where are they repelled? Is there a counter attack? Have Rush have the Ukrainian forces count? Uh, push them back and actually took uh, maybe an, a Disney or Duhachi, Duhachi. Uh, there isn't such information from the Ukrainian sides usually they will just say oh there's fighting here around here around here that is you most of the time these are all point it, it's not usable the information is just rubbish uh, so and then at times they will be very detailed for example they they later you will see that they actually gave us all the positions based on what they know of all the Russian position in the north so then that is useful then I will use that and and 
so but that doesn't mean the Russian informations are perfect. So the Russian info, the Russians only inform us of their victories. They will not tell us of their losses. So, so while I have to be careful of what the Ukrainians say because they tend to lie a lot and uh, to a lot of propaganda. For the Russians, it's not so much about what they tell us, but it's not. It's more about what they don't tell us. For example, the failure at Vosnesens, no information. Uh, for example, sometimes if you follow me closely, you will you will notice that certain cities and uh, or uh, certain villages and towns, they have already mentioned they have captured it, and then two days later they they mentioned they captured they captured it again. That actually means what? That means that between those two captures, the Ukrainians actually counter counter attack and took the town, and this information is never uh given by the Russians. They, the Russians will never report on uh, Ukrainian uh, success. However, the Ukrainians will actually report on Russian success. The, the, but very limited. It's not a lot. Sometimes they'll say, they are, they say, they say uh, the Russians may be moving. Uh, they had some success in Rubizne, for example. They are, or maybe they will say uh, the Russians have uh, success in taking uh, certain town the ukrainians will do that but the russians will never the russian will never say uh the success of the ukrainians well the U ukrainians will say but that is very rare it seems like they are they have uh, a few people doing the operational report and only one one person actually understands the, the military aspect of things so they take turn and do the opera uh, operational information and i have to wait for that one guy that actually know what he's talking about to actually uh give me the intel the other people are just like you know talking vague, vague stuff that is uh that is not really useful so this so just to share so things that so the other things that uh so the of, official information tends to be you know quite safe then i have information that coming from the the so-called fans I like you know like as if you are fans you no know? like the pro Russian telegram channels and the pro Ukrainian telegram channels so in the in for these cases for uh those are the things that I actually try to capture that are unlikely to be mentioned by the official channels for example the fighting at Berlin Cove and uh, at this and Husarivka around here as well as uh student or all this all this information is only from this third party sources and uh, sometimes they have photos to and um, videos that can back up the information uh sometimes it's just a one-liner and sometimes for me based on the movements or the progress because i like i said i've been following all the way i feel that it's believable i will put it into into the map even though it could be just a one-liner and usually this applies to the Russian sources. For the Ukrainian sources, I operate differently because Ukrainians, like I said, they lie a lot. There's so much lying and uh, propaganda and that makes their information less trustable. It is, so it's not about me not wanting to put their information, but it, you have to understand that it's actually a kind of a trust, trust meter or of sort, like, that they they have a like you know it's like a credit card they run out of trust credit i i just find their information harder to trust so as a result it, information coming out from the ukrainian side i tend i tend to uh be more careful and then uh i mean i'm talking about the ukrainian sources the non-government one so for example i saw a uh, for Vones vosnesinsk i have uh I saw this journalist, this so-called uh, so-called uh, independent journalist in Vosnesens, you know, and then the, he was reporting about the aftermath of the battle over there. And this does, and this is actually uh, highlighted to me by one of you guys, the viewers. And then I I went to look at it, and then I I briefly run tr go through, and then I see yeah it does seems like the battle is over but you see the problem is it contradicts the russian side of the report where the russians actually took the entire this part the southern part just below the river here and then 
the lack of information of a fight or something and then plus another one another report where the russians actually crossed the river and captured some of the leaders from this city that is very contradicting so i did not report on that and then i waited for more information so th so this is how i operate because ukrainian informations are you know or at least pro ukrainian information i have to double check because uh they just in they just engage in too much propaganda that i have, i have trust issue with them uh and then uh so around half a day ago or a day ago uh i think more journalists and the media started started to report on first and then uh of course it's also mostly propaganda but it does seems to confirm that the russian forces have been eliminated uh, in this area like in entirely eliminated and probably the rest are just running away you know randomly uh because one of the reason is there's lack of fighting and the lack of uh, capturing of the vosnesians by the russian side because they are there for so long it's unlikely that they are able to hold a position in the place where the ukrainians can reinforce easily so if they do not capture the city then uh then they are <clears throat> they are likely to be in danger and then uh, given the lack of fighting and the uh, information coming out from the Ukrainian side that uh, you know they, they have this this many uh, dead Russian bodies and, uh, and stuff like that and they are able to kind of reinforce again the location so that confirms this information so this is how I, I operate um, so for those that I, I, I just find it funny that you no know, that I have both pro-Ukrainian and pro-Russian saying that I am pro-Russian or pro-Ukrainian that is hilarious i don't really care it is it's not my war i'm just reporting because i i'm just interested to know what's actually happening because the the propaganda war and information war started before the war even started so so that's why i started to try to get information of my own and that's why i started so thanks for listening me to rant about this for the past 15 minutes now i'll go back to the summary um so the ukrainians the ukrainian uh, operational report actually uh as you can see 19 19 march so this is a 19 march right so they actually get, had a super long operational information which you can find uh in the description uh in the quick update for this uh this you know, update of Russian Russian position in the north. So I'm not going to go through all the names again. You can actually go to look at the quick update, uh, the quick update where I have uh, I kind of explained all this position. So basically, in summary, is that the borders I have actually moved the borders according to all these new positions that is uh, il eliminated by the Ukrainians and. Uh, we can kind of see much clearer now what is the Russians is trying to do. They are definitely blockading Shenihiv from uh, Kiev, and uh, there is this standoff at standoff here where I have already mentioned for at least a week that the Russians have gathered their forces here, and and those information that the Russians are gathering here are from Russian sources, not from the official government source. So that's why I the information coming from the russian sites tends to be not always but tends to be rather reliable they they already mentioned that there's actually a defense line around here and then there was actually battles being fought already uh by the ukrainians previously i've even earlier i have marked russians to move anti bravari but they were pushed back by the ukrainians and then uh so now the defense line is here and then uh similarly uh, Bukcha still remain in Russian Russian held position. Uh, previously, you know, in the first around week two, the the Russians have already moved to the south, but then they were pushed back, and uh, and then now they are holding this position position around here because I believe they are they do not have enough forces to actually uh, encircle the south the southern side. Uh, so it's not so it's a bit dangerous for them to you know you be, you have to understand the operational reserves and all the mobilization is all here so <clears throat> so it, it creates a too too huge of a front for them to protect uh all this 
places. And uh, this site is actually rather protected because there's a re there's a major river as well as a, there's a forest. So the Ukrainian counter-offensive have to go through the road, go through Erpin or Horenka. So, uh, so it's a choke point in a way. So it's defendable. But in this area, the, the Russian forces can actually be pin pincered onto both sides. So this is why uh, I, I believe why the Russians have gave up the southern positions and they actually maintain a, a, a con congruent defense line uh, around here as well as around here. So the, the ones that are around here is actually to block uh, any possible uh, attack into the rear, into the supply lines, uh, which we have seen so much in the first uh, one to two weeks. There's actually no more major roads here, which is why you see the positions is here. There's no major roads here. Uh, Priluki is definitely there's Russian presence because uh, there is a uh, encirclement around here, and and they are mentioned that they may want to attack. This is probably a refueling point. A refueling point is like a stop, a resting stop for the for the forces moving in from Russia and re on the resupplying, and then we have other other positions around here that protects uh, the route uh, again towards the supply line. You can see there's a small road here, there's another small road here, there's a major road here, and they are all, there's a positions around here. So maybe there's on, the only way is actually go through here. So I suspect there might be some Russian positions uh, or checkpoints protecting this area as well. And then you can see that it's con con continue, it just continues all the way to Sumi area. And then this major, this road, small road here is already, already blocked by Lebedin and then here at the uh, Moskovsky uh, Bobrik. So you can see it's a con it's a congruent defense line. Unless the Russian, uh, the Ukrainians are going to go cross country, uh, the, if they are going to go by road, all the, all the roads is actually uh, blocked by the Russian forces. So this is a, uh, this is the interesting part about uh, this update by the Ukrainians. It actually just shows us uh, the entire you know, plan, what the Russians are doing. If you look at this, this kind of uh, static position, these are all static positions. They are not, uh, this is not just, oh, they are spotted there. No, these are static positions. And uh, so they are, they are they're going to be staying there for some time. So uh, also, they, Previously, I, I listed Izin, uh, Nizin as a as a encircled and uh, something like you know what happened in Shenahiv, like encircled and or besieged town. Uh, it's, it's now officially officially taken by the Russians because it is mentioned to be under control of the Ru Russians in, by the Ukrainians. Uh, according to one of the viewers who uh, Robert who highlighted to me that uh, he found this information on Wikipedia. He said that uh, for Novhorod, Sevinsky, as well as a Konotop, they actually made a deal with the Russians uh, to stay neutral. Essentially, what it means is actually to stay neutral. They, they say that the agreement was that uh, the Russian forces will not, <clears throat> will not touch the city's government. They will not deploy troops in the city. And, and the city will, in, will not obstruct transportation or maybe the Russians will not obstruct transportation and they will not remove Ukrainian flags. And as they agree, the residents will not attack Russian forces, which means that uh, they, have, they have become neutral, e essentially. So this uh, helps the Russians to you know, take away troops from around this region. And this is the, the citizens in these two regions can just uh, breathe easy. So they will remain uh, gray or uh, black or gray uh, from from now on. Uh, but however, the the same cannot be said of Sumi yet. <clears throat> um, further down, you can see the this defense line continues, but there is a weakness which is the Volohiv. According to one of the viewers, uh, one of the viewer of DPA as well, he 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 actually stays there, and then the when around he. Around one or two days ago, he mentioned that there is already fighting near the city for the past two days. So by now, it's probably three or four days. <clears throat> then, uh, and there are reports that the they are fighting. So you see, near here, he's two days of fighting. I live here. 
So they but they are actually fighting now as well. The Russians need this position to secure, you know, like I said, the continuous line. And perhaps if they can take this, then they can actually move down to Messimivka uh, as well as uh, Boho Duhiv. And then that will actually extend the line further and allow a more effective siege of a Atri Trika. So, um, just before I go, <clears throat> I go on further to the east, the Ukrainian forces have captured uh, Trostyanets. Uh, apparently the forces the Russian forces around here is very small. They they mainly use this to do a uh, to do a uh, bombardment bombardment of Otaika, and then the they got hit back maybe by drones, and then uh and then there are photo photos being taken of the destroyed uh vehicles, and if you can take photo of the destroyed vehicles, means it's captured. So it's captured. It's not officially mentioned by anyone. So I assess that it is actually taken by the Ukrainians. So I put it as is. Um, further down, the the Ukrainians mentioned uh, Melinivka is under Russian position. So previously I mentioned here there's fighting. So now I've put it as a captured position uh, for the Russians. Chuhiv, however, is still under Ukrainian control. Interestingly, is Liman is actually uh, mentioned within the lease. So no idea what happened to Andrivka as and uh, Slobozanske. So as well as Donetsk there, I suppose it is still in Ukrainian position, but there could also be possibility that it is not. So no idea. I just gonna leave it there. Um previously uh in terms of Husarivka here. We only know that the Russians attacked uh, this town here, but we did not have a conclusion to it. So the Ukrainians basically told us that it's actually captured by the Russians because it's here. So it's now a uh, Russian territory. And interestingly, they, the Ukrainians also talk about this position called Petrivsky, uh, which is here. So which means that... Um, the Russians actually, after Husarivka actually moved further down, trying to push southward uh, along together with the Izum, fr Izum front, probably you know, trying to uh, cut off reinforcement to Izum here. But it seems like they stopped here. Not sure if they are trying, they are here yet. Not sure because these are static positions, right? So they could be here stopping reinforcement to Izum. And then, uh, wells on the Izium side, they are pushing f south. Uh, there's no more information about these forces around here. And as well as this offense around here. So, I may want to take away them uh, if we continue to have no information. Just like what happened to Vosnesens, it, it was too quiet for too long. When it's too quiet, uh, it's not a good sign for the Russians. Because Russian, uh, Russian so sources, you know, they are very happy to tell us about their victories. So when they are too quiet, uh, it means things are not going very well, which which also be, could be a sign where the, the major counter-offensive by the Ukrainian forces might actually be true. But of course, counter-offensive doesn't mean they will have success. So maybe there is a stalemate for most side, for most of the fronts. And it could be also be that the Ukrainians actually took positions, but they do not announce it. And then the Russians will not admit it. And then we have no information, and then thus everything uh, remains at is. So, so just be mindful about this. Uh, so, previously I mentioned uh, Rubinsne has been captured by the Russians, and then fighting was all in the outskirt as the Russians trying to uh, wipe out the remnants of the forces. Uh, however, the Ukrainian uh, government side uh, have a video of a single soldier. Uh, uh, saying some uh, greetings to people saying that he is actually a Rubisne and the Rubisne is still under Ukrainian uh, control. I will not believe this. So I just, but I want to highlight this in case you know someone say that oh no I, I I'm pushing Russian propaganda. The Ukrainian said uh, no put it in the government government uh office 
I think source or or maybe this is a government one, but I just don't believe it. So I I need more more information to to corroborate this, because on the Russian side, the they announced that they are now at the northern edge of a uh, decision, and they are also wipe trying to wipe out all uh, some of the retreating Ukrainian forces. So this is a contradicting information, and based on trends of accuracy. I I'm leaning towards the Russian information. Uh, fighting and several donors continue. No news there, so likely to have us a, a stalemate over there. Uh, of, of course, this urban warfare. This con this is not going to be easy. Uh, Popasna continue to be fighting. Um, so we can see the Ukrainian resistance is actually very strong, even uh even as Russian uh, forces uh announced they have captured the city. So perhaps uh, Ukrainians have sent in reinforcement to prevent the city from fully taken and entrenched. Uh, and of course, this entire line doesn't change because this entire line is a consist con a consistent congruent a line of defenses. And uh, the stronghold is at Edivka. Similarly, no progress around here. The Russians, uh, the Russian or Donetsk forces can only bombard it and use air force to air support to attack it but they cannot really uh get any advance so i just this is just a testimony of you no know, the ukrainian forces is not pushovers they are actually very well trained uh it looks like the training by the nato or western or u.s forces has worked out and uh as far as i am concerned right from the look of it uh they are just as well trained as the russian forces so so let's not make any mistake about that. That the Ukrainian forces is actually the uh, Ukrainian military is actually a uh, proficient, uh, which also explains why the Russians have to attack from multiple uh, vectors rather than you know, do their Georgian uh, Georgian uh, style, which is only fighting through the rebel area. Uh, so, so this helps to answer a bit why, maybe why the Russians have to attack directly into Ukraine from Russian territory. Uh, so in so uh, the do, according to the defense ministry, uh, the Donetsk forces captured Taramchuk, which they previously captured before. And then uh, so fighting is at Stepney. So remember I mentioned that uh, the Russians never report their losses. This is a good example. That means the Ukrainians actually launched a counter attack and took these two towns. And then now the Rus the Russian or Donetsk forces have to catch it uh to fight it back and get it back again. So uh that's why we have this uh Taramchuk get getting captured again and now Stepne, which is step north uh, in Russian, was already captured and now they are fighting over there. Uh, I just have I just have a glimpse of the latest information because the timing now in Ukraine uh, as per at this moment is 10 a.m. So around an hour ago or so, the Russians have already uh, already uh, sent out their morning report. Uh, the the Donetsk forces have already captured recaptured the uh, Stepney. Uh, According to Russian sources, this is not official, but the Russian forces have captured Vuleda. Uh, to the Russian, uh, pro-Russian channels, they say this is a very big thing. Uh, they apparently it seems like this is actually a stronghold, because if you look at the buildings here, these are all individual houses, small, small, small compounds, whereas these are actually built up high rises. So, as a result they seem to consider this as a very uh, important position to hold. Uh, maybe it's more defendable because of the high rises. Maybe because there are things there that we do not know that allows it to be a stronghold. So anyway, the Russians caught, captured it. And uh, I mentioned uh, in yesterday's uh, summary that the Russians have take, taken uh, shut this uh, Shaktaske as, as well as Novo Krenka. That information is actually wrong. I misread it. The the Russian official statement is they reached the border of these two towns. 
So uh, that's my mistake. So they call this a defense line. So that, that means there might be a congruent uh, defense line around here. And then uh, the Russians actually is now fighting over this line. So I'm sorry about this mistake. So no, no more information about any part of these places, except that uh, the uh, Huayipo is still fighting. So I'm not sure how they are able to fight for so long. In Mariupol, uh, fighting is in the center already, which I have already reported. Um, there is no other information on Mariupol for, for yesterday. Uh, uh, on the, just to add a little bit, all the way out, uh, all the evacuation route, there are checkpoints and by the Russians and they are trying to catch any any desertions or any neo Nazis <clears throat> by the Ukrainian side, and uh, according to the latest uh, propaganda, if you want, they actually brought in a chemical sniffer. That means uh, there's this uh, machine that they actually can sense a certain chemical. So this machine is trying to capture. Uh, I think, may from my opinion, it's actually something to do with gunpowder. So, so. So it is possible for the mission machine to detect whether a person actually helped firearms. So I believe the fire, what it's talking about is actually a gunpowder. So, so they will actually scan every every guy that going through the going through the checkpoints to see whether they have actually held weapon before. If they held weapon before, they will actually be detained and questioned, and uh, all the guys have to strip uh, to sh to see if they have any tattoo. So that's what that's what happening in Mariupol. Uh, moving back to to uh, Mykolaiv, uh, Vosnesensk is uh, secured by the Ukrainian forces. The Russian forces has been eliminated. As a result, I see no more point in living around this you know this major detour, because this is just a transport route. This is not Russian position. This is a, this is a route that they took. Similarly to this. This, uh, this is just the route that the Russian forces take. So I have removed the entire part. Uh, I have not removed this one, the entrenchment at uh, Kashmiro Mikhailovka, because I have no information that it had fell. Uh, it had fell. So in the, the last information I had from the Russian sources is that this position and this position are still holding three days ago or two days ago. So I'm going to leave them there first. So don't be distracted by this. These are not Russian positions. This is just the route they took to go around the Russia, uh, the Ukrainian uh, positions. However, uh, the Ukrainians seems to have taken uh, Snihurivka by the territorial defense. Uh, not really the Ukrainian military, it seems, but more like you know the civilian fighters or something. Not too sure. I have no idea. I'm not too sure. So. Then this is very close to this uh, for operating base here, and I'm not sure what is the fate of this. Maybe they have retreated. Maybe they have not. And then, uh, because of the taking of this position, there is a uh, Ukrainian sources that saying that now the the forces here is actually moving south towards this road, and that the forces that had success at uh, Posad Porovsky is actually moving south east down this road. There's also a report that there's a bombardment on uh, Chernobyl where there is a tactical HQ, a Russian tactical HQ here. And then uh, they mentioned that the tactical HQ is destroyed and then there's a commander being killed. A Russian commander is killed over here. I have no idea. And uh, usually I don't report on, I don't indicate bombardments. So I just leave it, leave it leaving it blank. And let's see if this movement actually result in fighting around Kherson. So if there's fighting around Kherson, we're probably we're probably going to be hearing it, especially in the mainstream news. So this is the summary of the day twenty four of this uh Russian Ukraine not a war. So uh, I think yeah that is all. And uh. Yeah, I have talked about that already, right? So, and that's all. So if you find this useful, 
please like the video if you haven't uh, haven't subscribed please subscribe uh and uh do share this video to your friends and family and, or your community that might be interested in all these things and also uh do check out the patreon the, the patreon page i have is in the description uh, below um where you can have exclusive content the the last one was talking about the iron cross that was uh, on the ukrainian president's shirt so i uh, i went to research about the history of the insignia of the ukrainian military and then maybe that kind of tell us something about what putin say and also uh I'm also uh, considering uh, opening up uh, the Discord. I have DPA already have a Discord channel actually, but it's not really used. And uh, probably I'm going to open up a Discord uh, where you guys, uh, new normal viewers, can also go there and join. And then we can actually you know share information, discuss, debate, or argue or fight each other uh, over everything not just in ukraine but the geopolitical situation all around the world uh, i will put up more information when i i finish my setup first because i need to think of how the thing should run at discord before if not it will go haywire so uh if you are interested in the discord you know where we can discuss stuff uh do do uh drop a comment to you know let me know and any ideas or your opinion about the discord channel and also uh of course the the patrons the patron patrons will have their own uh, exclusive channels uh zone within the discord uh for sure uh, definitely priority goes to the people that actually committed with money so i will pay more attention to them so this one uh no choice because uh you the numbers is getting a bit too big now to actually comment on everyone's uh comment uh in youtube i'll still try my best but it's taking a long time to reply everyone so so if i did not reply you there's a chance that is actually i missed out on your comment uh because sometimes youtube uh youtube mechanisms doesn't work very well at times and uh sometimes is i don't know how to reply you or i actually have no time to reply you so um so hope you hope you have some understanding and then i will see you in the next update